Brooms are a new enchantment type from Duskmourne House of Horrors. They convey the maze-like nature of the plane and the creepiness of locked doors in horror films. Brooms are more or less the new split cards that Magic has had for a very long time. The difference in these, however, is that instead of being instants and sorceries, rooms are enchantments that enter the battlefield and then stay there. Each side of a room enchantment is called a door. You can cast either one of the sides for the specified mana cost, and then that side enters the battlefield open. The side you did not cast stays closed forever. Well, unless you pay for its mana cost, so you can open it later if you'd like. Unlocking the second half of a room doesn't affect the half that's already unlocked. It stays unlocked, and all abilities on both halves of the card are active and or usable. Once both sides are opened, they stay open. 709.5F says some spells and abilities instruct a player to unlock half of a permanent. To unlock half of a permanent, a player chooses the locked half of that permanent, and that permanent is given the appropriate unlocked designation. Player's mark, right? <laughs> well, let's get into the nitty gritty of rooms. Unlocking a room is a special action. It does not use a stack and cannot be responded to. Anytime you have priority during a main phase, of your turn and the stack is empty, you may pay the mana cost of a locked door, also called its unlock cost. There's no way to cast both halves of a room card. When the room spell resolves, the corresponding door becomes unlocked as the room enters. Room cards have two card faces with a shared type line on a single card. The characteristic of the door you didn't cast are ignored while the spell is on the stack. Each room card is a single card. For example, if you discard a room card, you've discarded one card, not two. If an effect counts the number of enchantment cards in your graveyard, Defiled Crypt Cadaver Lab accounts once, not twice. Each room card has two names. If an effect instructs you to choose a card name, you may choose one of those names, but not both. If an effect allows you to cast a permanent spell with mana value three or less from among cards in your graveyard, you could cast Prop Room this way, but not Dazzling Theater. While in any zone other than the stack or the battlefield, a room's card's characteristics are a combination of its two doors. Greenhouse Rickety Gazebo is an enchantment with mana value 7 while in your hand, library, graveyard, or exile. So if we want to search for it with Beseech the Queen as a quick example, we'll have to have 7 or more lands to find it, even though Greenhouse only costs 3 and Rickety Gazebo only costs 4. It's a sum total in these zones. These characteristics are also true when both doors of the room are unlocked. While on the battlefield, a room's characteristics are a combination of the characteristics of its unlocked doors. For example, if Smoky Lounge Misty Salon is on the battlefield with both doors unlocked, its names are Smoky Lounge and Misty Salon, its mana value is 7, and it's a room enchantment and has the abilities in each door's text box. If a spell or ability would create a copy of a room spell on the stack, the copy retains the choice of door which was cast, but also retains the full characteristics of the spell. The characteristics of the door that wasn't cast are still ignored while the copy is on the stack. And when the copy resolves, the token it becomes will enter with the appropriate door unlocked. If a room enters from any zone other than the stack, it will enter with both halves locked. And if neither door of that room is unlocked, it's a room enchantment with no names and no abilities. Room abilities such as Surgical Suites ability trigger when they enter the battlefield. This however is not an enter the battlefield effect. Since the door becoming unlocked is what causes the ability to trigger, effects found on cards like Panharmonicon will not apply. Some abilities allow you to lock or unlock a door of a room you control. You can't choose to lock or unlock a door that's already been locked or unlocked with such an ability. If such an ability requires a target, you can target target a room even if both of its doors are locked or unlocked, but the ability won't do anything when it resolves. Some doors have abilities that trigger whenever you unlock that door and require one or more targets. You can unlock that door even if there would be insufficient legal targets for that triggered ability. The triggered ability won't go on the stack. An ability that triggers whenever you fully unlock a room triggers when a door becomes unlocked and the other door of that room is already unlocked or when both doors of that room become unlocked simultaneously. Man, rooms are complicated. I'll put all of rule 709.5 in the description, which talks all about rooms in detail. But I hope these examples worked for you and made sense. If you need to purchase any rooms, make sure you help out the channel and do so through the TCG Player affiliate link in the description below, as well as the Milkman proxy link for your proxy needs. 
and make sure you join me next week for your weekly dose of magic.